Yes, we can see it, uh, Miguel. All right, okay. So once again, thank you. And the topic that was assigned for this afternoon session is about putting up safety nets using life and non-life insurance. So I'd like to begin our session this afternoon by inviting everyone to join me for prayer. Then this is the prayer for financial abundance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I ask you to bless me so that I may be a blessing, Lord. I commit myself to enrich others, but because I cannot give what I do not have, I commit myself to be rich. I commit myself to serve you and to serve the poor with my wealth. Today, I open myself to the abundance of your universe. Use me as your channel of love. Give me the ability to create wealth that will bless the world. Increase my financial wisdom and expand my territories. I place my life in your hands. Amen. Okay, thank you very much, uh, brothers, for joining me in this uh, prayer. So basically, um, as Dom mentioned, not the topic that was assigned is, is by is quite you know huge. But I would just like to narrow it uh, for the purpose of our discussion this afternoon, just to cover three items: the basic understanding of risk, the types of risk, and the proposed ways on how we can actually manage risks. And shortly after the presentation, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Okay, so what do we mean by risk? No. Um, earlier, our speaker actually talked about uh, the risk associated in the workplace. So my specific topic would actually be more on the financial risk that we also encounter. So risk is actually the possibility of something bad happening. It involves uncertainty about the effects or implications of an activity with respect to something that we value, such as life, health, or property. And the focus of my discussion will actually cover these this, uh, areas, life, health, and property. And normally, we associate risk with the undesirable consequences or the negative effect it has. So what are the types of risks that uh, we face daily? There are actually six types of risks, and we will actually uh, focus more on the pure risk, no? since it's only pure risk that can be covered under life or non-life insurance. So we have actually speculative risk. When we talk about speculative risk, this actually pertains to situation that may cause loss or gain. So a typical example of this is if we bet in a gambling transaction, wherein there is a 50-50 chance that we either win or lose the bet. Speculative risk can also be associated with investing time, equipment, money, and human resources to produce a new product. So we are unsure if this product will actually be profitable, if this product will make us money, or it will be a losing proposition. And something that we may be accustomed with is investing in the stock market or probably buying some real properties as a form of investment. Again, why is it uh, referred to as speculative? Because it can actually go up or it can actually go down. On the other hand, what's important when we talk about risk is really to get a better understanding of pure risk. So when we talk about pure risk, this actually provides situation that pose the chance of loss with no chance for gain. So parating talo pag pinag-uusapan natin ang pure risk. Okay? Pure risk is random. It can happen to anyone and it always results in a loss. So, ano bang mga example ng pure risk? Yan. Vehicular accident. Accidental collision. 
our speaker earlier talked about earthquake. So these are the catastrophic effects of earthquake, sickness, and eventually death. Okay? So wala hong nakikinabang dito po sa mga risk na ito. The other types of risks are also known as financial risks. Okay? So this is actually a type of risk where a situation of which the outcome of an event can be measured in terms of monetary value. The losses can be assessed and a proper money value can be given to those particular losses. This can be better appreciated when you talk about investment 101 because you will have a better appreciation and understanding on certain risks associated with financial risks such as liquidity, interest rate, investment. There are also what we call non-financial risks, and this normally refers to a situation where the outcome of which cannot be measured in monetary terms. Okay, kaya siya non-financial. A typical example would be a wrong choice or a wrong decision. Okay, that would give possible discomfort or dislike or embarrassment. And an example of which is probably the choice of car, the choice of brand, or the color. Okay. So these are some examples, as mentioned earlier, for financial risk. Talk about inflation risk as one of them. And for non-financial risk, to we'll talk about regulatory trends, customer experience, technology, product design. Then finally, the other two remaining types of risk are actually fundamental risks. When we talk about fundamental risk, this refers to the risks that affect the entire economy or large numbers of people or groups within the economy. So, like what's happening today, we are all affected by the global pandemic. In 2008, we were greatly impacted by the global financial crisis. And you know, we can just take a look at, uh, you know, the natural disasters that has greatly impacted the lives of many, you know, like the likes of Ondoy, the likes of Yolanda, and the recent typhoon. Well, when we talk about particular risks, this actually refers to the possibility of loss, which can arise from a situation related with any specific individual event no so fundamental it talks about the group particular specific individual an example is na nakawan ka ng bahay nagkaroon ka ng problema sa kotse na aksidente ka nasunugan ng bahay nawalan ng trabaho so these are some examples of particular risk then giving you the examples between the fundamental and the particular risk. Now, there's a saying that life is inherently risky. There is only one big risk that you should avoid at all costs, and that is the risk of doing nothing. That's why they say life is more risk management rather than exclusion of risk. And this is what hopefully I will be able to share with you some ideas on how you can manage the risk that you face daily. So for purpose of our discussion, we will just zero in on pure risk. So ano ba itong pure risk? So when we talk about pure risk, it is a category of risk that cannot be controlled, okay? And has two possible outcome, complete loss or no loss at all. Bakit no loss at all? Because in insurance, there is what we call the principle of indemnification, wherein if you suffer any loss, you can actually recoup that loss that you experience. So there are no opportunity, pure risk, there are no opportunities for gain or profit when pure risk is involved. I've actually class classified our discussion on these 
three types of pure rest. Personal, property, and liability. So, the examples of this pure rest include the following. Accidents that result in physical injury and damage to property. Illnesses that people get throughout life as part of aging. And acts of nature resulting in damage to persons and property including premature death. And as mentioned earlier, it is only in this risk, under pure risk, that we can actually cover or that, can it, that it can actually ad be addressed by having life or non-life insurance. So let me first go to personal risk. So ano ho ba ang mga risk pag pinag-usapan natin ang personal risk? Ito po yun. That's why if you take a look at the word life, meron pong if sa gitna. Diba? Life is spelled as L-I-F-E. Pero in between this word life, you have if. Because life is full of ifs. And part of the personal risk that we have to prepare for are these three contingencies that can happen to any one of us anytime. First is untimely death. Second, sickness or disability. And third, would be old age. Because if you do not die too young, you live too long. Dalawa lang po yan. So pag-usapan po natin una is the first, untimely death. The statistics is a bit old, but it's no different from the statistics today. Uh, Miguel? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, are Are you using your slides? Because I think we are we are we are stuck with the title page. Ah, really? Yeah. Uh okay. Uh, yes, I'm using my slide there, Peter. Uh, but it's not moving. We're we're only in the. Yeah. Uh. All right. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. No problem. Okay. Let me let me sh reshare where I left. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. How about the slide before? Can you see this slide? Um, you are not on a uh, presentation view or you are not on full screen view because we am. can see the slides, uh, the two, two, two slides immediately after this one. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. How about if I do this, can, can you see the slides? We can see it right now, actually. Okay. But you can see that the other succeeding slides as well. I can, yeah, we can see the two succeeding slides. Okay, wait. Uh, if I do like this, can you see still the other slides or? We can still only... see the other. Okay. Yeah, we can still see the other slides. Yeah. Okay. Um, I... Maybe we can do like uh, manually clicking on each slide, na lang para uh, it will it will move. Okay. How's that? Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you, can you see this slide? Protect loved ones? Yes. Yes, we can. All right. Okay. It's okay. All right. Sorry for that. It's okay. It's okay. So, as mentioned, no, uh, under personal risk, these are the inherent risks that can happen to any one of us. So, this can be classified into three. Untimely death sickness or disability and old age oh these statistics as uh, mentioned earlier is way back 2004 but it's no different from the reality of today wherein there was actually a recorded of death 
prevalent for the age group of 35 to 65 years. And the leading causes of death in the Philippines alone, from the information uh, provided by the Department of Health in 2009, 2009 rather, tells us that uh, there are about 276 Filipinos who die of heart disease every day. So, as you know, heart attacks can occur at any age, no? as young as 20 years old. But in general, elderly people experience more heart attacks, but females past midlife are at increased risk because of this condition. There are also another leading cause of death, and that is stroke. Nine people die of stroke every minute mas nakakatakot. 75% of stroke victims become permanently disabled. And this is again from the information provided by the Department of Health in 2009. There are also about 140 people who die of cancer every day. So while breast cancer is the leading cause of death among women, Lung cancer is the leading cause of death for both sexes. So unfortunately, there are nine people who are diagnosed with cancer every hour. So what happens if we encounter premature death? Why is it referred to as premature or untimely death? Because we never plan to die. And death happens when we least expect. That's why there's a saying in the organization that I belong to. We, we have a tagline, Tempus Fujit Memento Mori. And it actually goes like this. Time flies, remember that, because we do not know when, where, or how. So the moment that we leave this world, there are actually financial needs of the family that you also left, you leave behind. These are medical bills, Funeral expenses, household expenses, debt payments, education fund, funding requirement, no? if you have still kids who are going to school, emergency funds that needs to be addressed, and estate or inheritance tax. Well, the good thing about our taxation law right now is they have actually reduced the estate tax from 20% to 6%. But if you have an estate of about 100 to 100 million, that's still a lot to consider. A second type of personal risk that we should also be, pre be preparing ahead of time would be critical illness or the possibility of getting sick and encountering disability. Now, there's a chance that within the next 20 years, you and I will be diagnosed of a critical illness. And as you can see, as we age, the likelihood, the probability, the possibility of us contracting a critical illness increase. This is again, a statistics provided way back, but which is still very true today, that the three leading causes of death are due to critical illness, as mentioned earlier, heart attack, stroke, cancer. But what normally happens before death uh, you know, arrives is we normally get hospitalized. And what are the common expenses that we have to prepare for? Drugs and medicines, which account for 46%. Hospital room charges, 24%. And doctor's fee, doctor's fee which, is, which accounts for about 21%. They say that one out of three individuals between the age of 40 to 45 is likely to suffer a critical illness or pass away before reaching 65. And being healthy does not assure 
of our immunity from acquiring non-communicable disease like cancer. In fact, in a recent study by the John Hopkins Hospital School of Medicine, they discovered that two out of three cancer cases are due to random cell mutation. So only one third of the cases are connected with lifestyle genetic factors and environmental issues. So aside from sickness or illness, we should also be worried about disabilities caused about by accidents. One of 11 deaths in the Philippines is actually caused by an accident. Men who are 15 to 45 years old are more prone to accidents. And the Philippines is said to be the fifth most accident-prone country in the world due to natural and man-made disasters. So, health has always been a major concern for all of us. And the odds increases. It can actually go as high as 50% that a young person could become disabled sometime before retirement. And these chances of disability compared to chances of death is 3 to 1 between the ages of 32 to 42 and 2 to 1 for ages above 42. There's a saying that death cancels mortgage, but disability steps up death. So, let's take a look at the situation today. There are only about 16% of the entire population of the Philippines who can pay for medical expenses. I hope that our dear listeners, our dear attendees in this room are actually part of the 16%. So, how much do you need to prepare in case of hospital confinement? It really depends on the choice of hospital, the type of room, and the medical condition that you are actually being treated for. But this is a recent uh, statistics, no? rates from Makati Medical Center. Private rooms can run up to 3,000 per day. Simple surgeries run up to 80,000. Viral bacterial condition costs about 200,000 and up. In fact, no, for COVID cases, I'm pretty sure that you have uh, been reading the papers. There was even an article posted by the late, uh, the, the daughter, I think, of the late uh, Senator Alvarez, whom she said that the family paid about $8 million for their hospitalization expenses related to COVID. So as you can see, even a simple viral condition like COVID can run in the millions. But what if the conditions are critical in nature? Like the need for a heart bypass, the continuous treatment for cancer, and diabetes and its complication. Then definitely you need millions. This is a statistic no, on how much the total health expenditure was in 2017. Just imagine the total health costs amounted to 655 billion pesos. 34% was covered by government plans, the like of PhilHealth. 11% was covered by personal plans or group plans, like HMO plans or medical insurance, and a whopping 54% or roughly 322 billion came from out-of-the-pocket expenses. Let's take a look at the most recent statistics. So this was actually 2019. So in 2019, the total health expenditure amounted to 792 billion pesos. 
that's roughly 10%, 11% higher than 2018. So as you can see, there is really a need to prepare for the possibility of hospitalization because of the prevalence of this medical condition that can affect us and our families. So what are the options available to fund a medical treatment cost? Well, there are a lot, but I'll just like to dwell in on three items. No? So kanina, you know, I discussed no, in 2017, about 54% came out of the pocket expenses. So ito yung possibility sa nangyari. This a 54%. Of course, the first option, if you do not have a health plan, a medical plan, is to use your savings. So just imagine if you're saving for retirement, saving for education, automatically it will be wiped out the moment that you contract a medical emergency. Second option, if you have already exhausted all your savings, is actually to borrow money from friends or relatives. So unfortunately, ito po yung nakakalungkot na katotohanan, nawawalan po tayo ng kaibigan, nawawala po tayo ng kamag-anak. And finally, the worst thing that can happen to anyone is actually to sell assets. And I'm pretty sure that you have known, you know, you know people who have actually lived a comfortable life, but because they have not prepared well for medical emergencies, the family had to sell their prized properties. So the third personal risk is if you do not die too soon, you live too long. So that's why the question is, how do you see yourself in your golden years? Now this is a statistic that was provided a couple of years back wherein they discovered that for every 100 people who started life, 66 will actually be dependent on their children, on social security, on the charity of others come age 65. Unfortunately, 16 out of 100 will never reach the age of 65. 13 people during their retirement years will still be working, not because they want to, but because they cannot afford not to work. They have to fend for themselves. Four will be independent for life. These are people who have actually started a good financial plan. And one will be filthy rich. Probably, you know, that person who have won a lottery or probably that person who was born with a silver spoon. So the question is, how much money will it last during our retirement years? So I made an estimate that if you have a million pesos and you retired in 2009, so that's 12 years back, and assuming that inflation was still at the high of 7%, though now it's a bit low, your 1 million will roughly last to you for about 4-5 years. So just imagine, with your 1 million retiring at 65, you would end up exhausting, using it up until you reach the age of 69 years old. Moving forward, if you plan to retire at age 60 or age 65 and you would want to have a comfortable 50,000 monthly income, for you to reach that goal, you would need roughly about 5.8 million. If you prepare at age 70, you will need roughly 4 million to retire comfortably. So the question that we need to ask ourselves when we talk about personal risk 
associated with old age is will you enjoy your retirement or retire your enjoyment? The second pure risk would dwell on property risk. So, medyo malaki rin ang scope ng property risk, but I will just uh, dwell on two of which, which would include fire and motor. So, property risk involved property damage due to uncontrollable, un uncontrollable, uh, uncontrollable forces such as earthquake, fire, lightning, typhoon, floods, etc. So, it's a direct loss of or damage to the property owned by a person. So, I'd like to discuss property related to fire. So, property insurance against fire and other allied barriers. So, what are the things to consider in the absence of any protection for our property? The first of, law, of all is the financial loss due to damage caused by fire and lightning, which is a standard policy of uh, fire insurance contracts and other name perils, no? which we'll discuss later. The other name perils are also referred to as extensions, riders, or endorsements. What's important to understand when we talk about non-life insurance is risks, there are actually a lot of exclusions. Risks that are not covered in non-life policies. So what you have to do, if you want that particular risk to be covered in your policy, you have to buy it back through what we call an extension, a rider, or an endorsement. So when we talk about fire, it actually refers to fires brought about by electricity. Alam niyo po, pagdating sa insurance, medyo technical po talaga siya. So that's why very specific in definition as to the cause of that particular loss. So when we refer to fires, we refer this to electricity such as faulty wiring or explosion of gas as well as those caused by lightning and natural disasters, which we, re we refer to as extensions. So, ano po yung mga examples ng extensions natin or riders? These are coverage for earthquake, typhoon, flood, extended cover, like smoke, aircraft, vehicle, and explosion. Now, for those who are residing in Paranaque, in Merville in particular, there actually have been incidents of falling aircrafts. So, kung wala po kayong provision for falling aircraft, nasunog ang bahay, at ang proximate cause, yung pinagsimulan po ng sunog, ay dahil doon sa nahulog na aeroplano, hindi po kayo mababayaran. Riot, strikes, and malicious damage, burglary, and robbery. Okay, so kailangan po, aware po tayo kung ano yung mga gusto natin i-cover the risk so that in case of the occurrence of that risk, we can actually recoup our financial loss. So, what are the other losses caused by fire? Falling walls. Maring yung kapitbahay mo ang nasusunog yung bahay, pero natumba yung kanyang pader, the damage ang property mo, would actually be covered under a fire insurance policy. Damage to firefighters' efforts to extinguish the fire. Sinira yung pintuan mo. That would be part of what is compensable. Damage or loss of property being removed from a burning building or damage to property due to weather exposure during and after the fire or even smoke damage. Kasi pwede pong usok lang Yung tingding mo, yung kisame mo, kulay puti ang pintura, pero hindi man nasunog, nang, nangitim dahil sa uso. Okay? So, these are actually losses that can be recovered under a fire insurance policy. 
There are also what we call losses due to abnormal occurrences. So at an convulsion of nature, which is uh, the cause of earthquake, volcanic eruption, I I believe you remember uh, yung eruption of Mount Pinatubo, wherein you know it spew a lot of ashes. So marami pong mga bubong na nasira, mga alulod na nasira dahil napuno ng volcanic ashes. Okay, so if you have a part policy that covers this. Diba? Pag nagsisignal po, nagdi-declare ng signal sa ang ating uh, weather bureau, si Pag-asa, they always refer to the strength of the wind. Kung ano yung signal niya, depende po siya sa lakas ng hangin. While flood refers to the downpour of water caused by the disturbances. So, kung hindi po kayo nakakover ng flood at binaha po ang inyong bahay, like recently, dyan sa may Marikina, Kainta area, kung wala po kayong flood policy sa inyong tahanan, nasira ang inyong gamit, hindi po kayo compensate And of course, war risk, civil war, terrorism. So, again, there are policies that would cover this if you take it as an endorsement, and most policies would actually consider this as a general exclusion. So as mentioned earlier, some of the rider's extensions or endorsements that you may consider when taking up a policy would be to include earthquake, earthquake fire, typhoon, flood plus typhoon, extended cover, riot strikes, and malicious damage. What is also important when taking out a fire insurance policy is the principle of average clause. There are people who would say, ay, itong bahay ko, pinagawa ko niyan 10 million, pero 5 million ko na lang ipapacover yan kasi gusto ko magtipid. Okay, so it's important that you are aware of this principle of average clause. So, ano ba tong average clause? It actually refers to under insurance at the time of loss, wherein the insured becomes a co-insurer of the uninsured portion of the property. So, in effect, kung ang value ng property mo ay 2 million, pero pinakover mo lang siya sa insurance ng 1 million, you are actually assuming the 1 million coverage by being a co-insurer. So, tignan natin yung example. Okay? Kasi ito po, importante rin pong malinaw po sa atin. Kasi pagdating ko sa payment of claims, darating po yan sa adjuster, i-appraise po yung property, sasabihin, oh, nagpa-insure ako ng 2 million. Oh, nagpa-insure ako ng 2 million. Or nagpa-insure ako ng 1 million, bakit hindi ako nabayaran ng 1 million? Okay, so example, the value of the property is 2 million. You actually cover it at 1 million. And the loss, nagkaroon ng sunog, partial loss, ay 1 million. So kung iisipin mo, ha, 2 million ang property, pinakover mo ng 1 million and the partial loss is 1 million, iisipin mo, teka muna, I should be compensated for 1 million because I covered it for 1 million. Now, since the actual cash value or the value of the property is more than what was insured, in this case, 2 million, then the average clause will apply. So how do you compute for that? The insurance that you had it covered, which is 1 million, divided by the value of the property, which is 2 million, times the amount of loss, which would actually give you 500,000. So kahit na po ang damage resulted to a 1 million loss and pinakover po nyo ng 1 million, 
hindi po kayo mababayaran ng 1 million kundi 500,000 lang. Kasi po, kayo po ay co-insurer doon sa property. Okay. The second type of property insurance that I'll just talk about uh, today is motor, motor vehicle. Because meron pa po yan, may marine insurance pa yan, pero medyo mahaba po yung sa marine. So we'll just limit it to property and motor. So motor vehicle, karamihan po sa atin ay may sasakyan. But I don't know if you're aware of the policy that you have. Most likely, bibili ka ng insurance sa kotse pero hindi mo talaga alam kung ano yung content. Okay, so it's also import it's important for us to understand. Now, when we talk about motor vehicle, it is classified into four areas or four types. No? Private car. Pag sinabi po natin private car, used for social, domestic, or pleasure purposes. Pwede po siyang gamitin for business, pero it should be for the insured business or profession. So, excluded po dito yung mga cars na for hire. So, kung bumili ka ng kotse, ginawa mo siyang grab, tapos ang policy mo ay private car, good luck kung ikaw ay mababayaran kapag na-disgrasya yung sasakyan mo. So it's important you know, for us to understand because it will actually um, have a great bearing when it comes to the assessment of the adjuster as to if the damage kung nagkaroon ng collision is covered under the policy. Second is commercial vehicle, better yung use for mainly uh, use mainly for business, motorcycle, okay, two-wheeled vehicle, and LTO vehicles. So ito na yung used to transport passengers for a fee. Okay? Ang private uh, vehicles no, na ginagawang grab, pumapasok siya sa LTO vehicles under a rainbow plate. So that's why it's important Kung ang sasakan mo ay ginagamit mo pang grab service, dapat ang insurance policy mo should be equivalent to the type of use. Also, what's important to understand in a motor vehicle is a definition of third party. Importante po yan. Sino pa itong third party? So, a third party is any person other than a passenger. Okay. So, hindi po third party ang miyembro sa bahay or any member of the family within the second degree of consanguinity or affinity of a motor vehicle order or his employee in respect to the death, bodily injury, or damage to property. Kasi po, baka isipin natin, yung kasamahan natin sa bahay, Nagpaparada tayo ng kotse sa loob ng garahe na bunggo natin. So, isipin natin, pwede ba natin siya i-claim sa third party? Hindi po siya pwedeng i-claim to. So, para maintindihan po natin sino tong third party, it's any person who is not an authorized driver, a person of the insured's household who is not a member of the family within the second degree of affinity and consanguinity, and who is not an employee arising out in the course of employment. Bakit po kailangan maintindihan natin yan? Because we will go partly doon po sa provisions ng motor policy. So, ano pong kinocover natin under a motor vehicle policy? So, it's the loss or damage to vehicle and its accessories. So, ito yung accidental collision, okay, or overturning, or collision or overturning consequently because of mechanical breakdown or because of wear and tear. There are instances na nakikita natin na susunog yung kotse because of of uh, external explosion, self-ignition, or lightning, yung mga burglary-related, kasama rin po yan, and malicious acts of third party. So, matin ka sa party, pinarado mo yung kotse mo sa labas, kinasgasan nung uh, hindi mo kaibigan, yung nakasagutan mo. Yan, pwede ka mag-claim doon. And also, pwede mga damages or losses 
due to extended perils. Okay? Like flood, typhoon, hurricane, eruption, earthquake, referred to acts of nature. Dati po tawag dyan, acts of God. Ngayon po, acts of nature. That's why most policies, if it is actually a mortgage in the bank, requires a coverage for AON. Okay? Kasi may dagdag premium po yan. So, it's important really to have that, especially alam natin yung sitwasyon ngayon, mabilis magbaha, you know. So, masabuti na may peace of mind tayo. Knowing that our vehicle includes an AON coverage. So, I'll not go over the different provisions no, of a standard motor vehicle insurance. But I will just highlight yung section 1. Because when you get a standard insurance coverage, meron po yung apat na sections. I'll discuss number 1 in a while. You have the no-fault indemnity, the loss or damage, and then the excess liability. So, ano po itong section 1? Ito po, importante po ito kasi hindi po kayo makakapagparehistro ng kotse at ngayon po, taon na naman na pagrehistro ng sasakyan if you do not have a compulsory third-party liability. So, mas kilala siya sa TPL, CTPL. Now, mas maganda po na kumuha na po kayo ng advance copy. Bakit? Kasi pag bumili po kayo ng CTPL doon mismo sa LTO, sa araw ng pagrehistro, ang presyo po niyan ay nasa mga 1,300, 1,400. Kung seswertihin ka, aabot pa yun ng 1,516. Pero if you will get your own copy in advance, you can actually get it for as low as 650. Okay? So that's the advantage of paparehistro ako next week. Pag-request ka na doon sa insurer ng CTPL so that you can actually save as much as half the price. So as mentioned, this is a mandatory requirement for car, for car registration. And the coverage only includes death and or bodily injury, and bodily injury of a third-party victim in an accident caused by the insured vehicle. So kung ikaw ay nagdadala ng sasakyan, nakabunggo ka ng third party, isang pedestre na tumatak, tumata weed sa kalsada, yan, ang magre-respond po dyan is your CTPL. Kung kulang po yung CTPL because the benefit is 100,000, then if you have, uh, if the insured or if the passenger has other forms of accident insurance, then pwede na mag-respond yung iba pang insurance. Pero ang una kong mag-respond sa policy is the CTPL. Paano po kapag nagmamaneho ka ng sasakyan, nakabunggo ka ng property? Nasagi mo yung pangketa, nasagi mo yung gate. Nako, hindi po mag-respond si CTPL dyan it will fall part of your liability insurance, which we'll discuss later. So, ano magre-respond yan? Dito po, balikan ko, kung meron kang excess liability insurance under Section 4, then Section 4-2, which is the third-party property damage, will respond to the policy. So, yung insurance ang magbabayad doon na sa nasira mong property. But Section 2 3 and 4 is included in a comprehensive motor insurance. So, si Section 1 mabibili ng separately, pero si Section 2, Section 3, Section 4 magkakasama po siya under a standard motor insurance policy. Okay? Finally, dun sa pure risk is liability. Ano ba tong liability? Okay, marami din po hindi aware dito, no? Pero pwede po tayong madimanda doon po sa ginagawa natin or doon po sa kung ano man na ang ating pag-aari. Liability risk may involve litigation due to real or perceived injury. For example, a person is injured after sleeping on someone else's icy driveway may sue for medical expenses, lost income, and other associated 
damages. Doon po sa bahay nyo, nag-imbita kayo ng bisita. Basa, hindi po uh, napunasan. So, slippery po yung surface. Yung bisita po ninyo na dulas, pwede po siya mag-file ng damages sa inyo. So, ano po yung mga classification ng liability insurance? And I'll just cover three kasi marami pong klaseng liability insurance. The first one is the general liability. So, general liability covers claim for medical costs and damages that result from an injury or illness caused by your business. So, claims for physical loss, destruction, or damage to tangible property caused by your business. So, an example nga po dito is kung meron kang negosyo, that's why tuwing January, if you notice, lahat po nang nagpaparehisto sa BPL o business permits and licensing department or licensing office ng City Hall, they actually ask you to submit a general comprehensive liability insurance for your business. And it is normally measured by the square area of your business premises. So, meron po siyang mga computation kung magkano po ang dapat na liability insurance coverage for the size of your business or office. So, importante po ito. This is what is referred to as CGL. So, yung mga nasa negosyo, kailangan may CGL kasi it also covers food poisoning. Yung dinala nyo ng pagkain, na lason, pwede po kayong idemanda and papasok po yung uh, comprehensive uh, general liability insurance to address claims no because of this risk. Second is personal liability. So this occurs in the event of an accident in or out of your home that results in bodily injury or property damage that you are held legally responsible for. Example, Nagsha-shopping kayo sa mall, nagwi-window shopping sa mall, bigla kang tumakbo, hindi mo napansin sa harap mo, may isang matanda, nabunggo mo siya, nahulog siya, pwede ka po niyang idemanda. For bodily injury. So if you have a personal liability insurance, that will actually address okay, the possible losses no, related to that risk. And finally, professional liability, no? like for engineers, accountants, lawyers, dito na po siya papasok, professional liability. Um, hindi po lahat ng insurance companies will have this kind of type of liability insurance kasi medyo komplikado po siya. No? I know of some, okay, but uh, it's very, very few really who provides these kinds of coverage. No? So professional liability covers financial loss, personal injury, and property damage resulting from negligent act, error, or omission while you're working for a client. So example, accountant ka, nagkamali ka ng pagbalanse dun sa libro, nagkaroon ng financial loss sa kliyente, hala, demanda ka. So if you have a professional liability that would actually respond to the claim. Kasama rin po dito yung mga uh, illegal dismissal. Okay? So, this would actually address uh, the indemnity from wrong decisions made by the management of the company. So, again, just to sum up, ang pinag-usapan lang po natin ay pure risk that can be classified into personal, property, and liability. When we talk about personal, we talk about the possibility of dying too soon, which is death, untimely death, getting sick or experiencing a disability due to accident, or if we do not die too young, then there's a possibility that we grow old, and if we do not prepare well, we will be a burden to our family and loved ones. When we talk about property, pinag-usapan po natin specific to fire, which is normally what we need to be worried about if we own properties such as our own business or our own residential house and lot. 
and motor insurance, motor vehicle. And finally, when we talk about liability, pinag-usapan po natin is yung general liability, personal, and professional liability. So, the next question is how do we handle, how do we manage, how do we mitigate this? Pinakasimple po is the use of insurance. Because insurance is all about risk. This is what will address the insured event of death, accident, illness, fire that would occur during the duration of the policy term. Pinakasimple po siya. But again, there are other ways which I will be sharing with you. So, ano ba yung simple ways of risk management? Okay? So, risk management is basically identifying the sources of potential claims and to generate plans or programs to mitigate them from happening and controlling the costs when they do. So, there are different ways on how you can handle risk. Pwede pong avoid, pwede pong reduce, pwede pong retain, or pwedeng transfer. Okay, so pag-usapan lang po natin kasi depende po sa inyo on how you would want to handle it. So, these are some ideas that you can consider. Ano po ba ang risk avoidance? So, risk avoidance deals with eliminating any exposure to risk that poses a potential loss. So, if you would like to avoid the risk of a loss in the stock market, huwag kang bumili ng stocks. So, definitely, wala kang risk. Kung gusto mong iwasan ng risk of a venereal disease, then do not have sex. Kung ayaw mong magkaroon ng divorce, ayaw mong natatakot ka baka hindi mag-work ang inyong relationship pag ikaw ay nag-asawa, do not marry. If you are worried that your car would experience troubles, ma makadisgrasya ka, maaksidente, huwag kang bumili ng kotse. Okay? So, of course, not all risk can be avoided. And notable in this category is the risk of death. Because lahat po tayo darating doon. Sabi nga, dalawa lang ang sigurado sa buhay, kamatayan at buwis. So, second is risk reduction. Ano naman itong risk reduction? Risk reduction deals with reducing the likelihood and severity of a possible loss. So, loss prevention requires identifying the factors that increase the likelihood of a loss, then either eliminating the factors or minimizing their effect. So, for instance, no, anong example? Speeding and driving drunk definitely greatly increase automobile accidents. So, anong gagawin? So, wag kang magmaneho kapag nakainom. So, that is a method of loss prevention that reduces the possibility or probability of an accident. And, of course, driving slower is an example of both loss prevention and loss reduction. Kasi alam naman natin, pag mabagal, basta kakaiwas ka sa aksidente. Okay? And even if there should be an accident, the magnitude of the loss will be significantly reduced. Third, retention, risk retention, okay, or risk acceptance. Itong risk at retention is accomplished by retaining the risk and for some risk, no, some or most of the cause of potential losses is transferred to third parties, usually insurance companies through deductibles and co-payments. Ito ang concept nito, parang nagsiself-insurance ka. There are actually medical insurance plans and even motor insurance. Now, if you notice, motor insurance meron deductibles, may tinatawag na participation. So, ito yung co-payment mo wherein you assume part of the risk okay, to save money because of the deductible. Bakit? Kasi imbis na mas malaki ang premium na babayaran mo, binabawasan mo yung bayad sa premium because nag koko insure ka. So dahil meron kang participation, syempre mas maingat ka magmaneho. Kasi alam mo, kapag nagkaroon ng aksidente, nasira yung kotse, 
meron kang babayaran, kahati ka dun sa babayaran, through what we call a deductible or copayment. Finally, risk transfer. Risk transfer can also be managed by the transfer of risk through hedging, purchase of an insurance policy, and for business risk by incorporating. So hedging is a method of reducing portfolio risk. Okay, so ito, this is uh, better appreciated when you, when you learn more about Investment 101. Okay, as a typical example dito is you are into importing, gagawin mo, i-hedge mo na foreign exchange transaction, lalo na kung volatile siya, kung pabago-bago. Diba? So you would want to lock on itong foreign exchange rate knowing that kahit magkaroon ng changes up or down, you will still benefit from that because nakalock in na siya for your transactions. Investors can reduce their liability risk in a business by forming a corporation. So ito naman, yung uh, risk is actually uh, passed on to the investors. The liabilities is passed on to the investors. And of course, individuals can pass on the risk to insurance companies that offers a premium to cover their personal property and liability risk. So we have the blueprint. But what's important to remember is you need to start planning for it. Because there's an old adage that goes, failing to plan is actually planning to fail. That's why you need to design your game plan. Ano ba ang gagawin ko? So first is you have to ask these questions. Do I have my financial priorities in order? Alam mo, marami tayong gustong gawin, pero hindi po natin kayang gawin lahat yan ng sabay-sabay. So we have to prioritize based on our available resources as well. Second, you have to know if you have enough income to meet your expenses. The irony of life is, habang lumalaki po ang ating income, lumalaki din ang gastos. I don't know if you've noticed that. Nung nagsimula ka magtrabaho, siguro 20,000, 30,000 lang ang sweldo mo, nagkakasya naman lahat sa gastos mo. Pero ngayon kumikita ka ng isang daan libo, ang gastos mo 120,000 na. Bakit nangyaring ganon? So you have to look, ano ba yung, you know, yung nagkakos kung bakit lumalaki. And more and often than that is the change of lifestyle. Do you spend too much money on unnecessary items? And what's important to also to ask yourself is do you have health challenges, sick family member, or, or unfortunate circumstances? Lalo na kung may sakit, no? and if it is genetic or hereditary in nature, chances are you will really need to set aside enough medical funds no? to pay for future hospitalization costs. So, once you've identified, have answered all these questions, the next first step that you need to do is to build an emergency fund. Bakit? Kasi di mo maiwasan, minsan masisira yung kotse, minsan may kailangan ayusin sa bahay. O kaya biglang katulad na itong pandemic, maraming nawalan ng trabaho. So if you're affected, you know, it will, you know, you'll need enough money to cushion the impact of your unemployment so that your family can get through you know, during this uh, situation. Or, pag nagkaroon ng medical emergencies. Now, ano ba ang tama or magkano ba dapat ang emergency fund? Actually, depende yan. No? Um, others will say three, three months. Others will say six months of your expenses or of your income. So, pero pinaka-safe na lang dito is at least to set aside three to six months of your monthly income. So, if you're making about 50000 a month, so dapat may naka-reserve kang mga 150 to 600, uh, 150 to 300000 for medical emergencies. Second, get an insurance policy. Okay. Marami pong klaseng life insurance policies. Now, we'll not go into the details of that, no? So, it really depends on the type of risk 
that your life insurance policy should address. If you're talking about short-term risk, no? like uh, in case of debt, meron kang utang na kailangan bayaran sa bahay, you get a term insurance to cover your mortgage. If you're looking on to provide enough income for the family, you can actually get a combination of term and whole life or even a variable life. So it will really depend on the risk that you're trying to cover and your available disposable fund to start an insurance policy. It's also important to get a medical plan. Magkaiba po ang HMO and medical insurance. Marami po ang aware sa HMO, pero they are not aware of medical insurance. An HMO usually is given by the company as an employee benefit. It provides a decent medical benefit limit somewhere between 70,000 to about 100,000 or 150,000 per illness. So okay naman po siya, puting meron kaysa wala. However, a medical insurance is very much comprehensive compared to an HMO because coverage can start at 500,000 and can go up up to 100 million pesos. An HMO policy would cover you until 65 years old. So, because that's how the framework, the design of HMO plans. Pagdating mo na 60, 65, sorry, thank you, your HMO coverage drops. A medical insurance can cover you up to age 100. So, these are just some of the differences. Then you also get a health and critical illness. Bakit? Kasi nakita natin kanina, that there is really the likelihood that we will contract a critical condition as we age. An HMO will not be sufficient to pay for critical illness. But a critical illness policy can provide you a lump sum amount. Depending on insurance company, there are those that can provide you a coverage between 1 million to 10 million. Okay, so that will take care of the post-care treatment brought about by a critical condition like stroke, heart attack, cancer, kidney problems, and the like. Accident insurance, ito pong pinakamura sa lahat. If you don't have enough money to pay for or to start a life insurance policy, make sure to start an accident insurance. Now, life companies and non-life companies offer accident insurance policies. Saan po mas mura? Saan po kayo mas makakatipid? Doon po kayo kumuha sa non-life company. Because accident insurance is a non-life line. Okay? So, kaya, yun po ang kinakater ng non-life insurance companies. That's why they can offer it at a lower premium. Of course, property insurance, kung may bahay ka, may kotse ka, nothing beats your peace of mind. Pag nasusunog ang bahay, hindi mo na kailangan isalba yung gamit mo kasi alam mo na mapapalitan yan. Diba? Why risk your life trying to save your properties, your you know your gadgets, etc. when you have a fire insurance to pay or indemnify you for that loss? So, ganun din sa motor insurance. And again, finally, yung liability insurance. So, after you get an insurance policy, it's now yeah. time to yeah. yes. Uh, we're we're a little over time now. So uh, all right. Um, can we, yeah. Can we wrap up? Last? Sige. Yeah. Sige. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sige. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. Sige. So just to summarize it, no, uh, I just have a couple of slides, lang. Okay. So you examine your current expenses. Eliminate non-essentials, create a budget, do not memorize, or, but write it down. Then, you know, budget it, uh, ideally a 10 to 20% that goes into savings. Pay off your debts and set aside monthly amount for uh, investments. So, that is you start saving. What's important is to understand your spending habits. 
allocate your resources to cover for basic and essential needs, mortgage payment, future needs, leisure, then non-essential. So unahin po natin yung basic before we spend for non-essential. Idea of savings is you pay yourself first. Ideally, you do your tithing. You allocate 20 to 30 percent for your savings and investment, and then the rest goes for your essentials. Kaya nga sinasabi natin dito, never pay other first. Unahin mo yung sarili mo bago ka magbayad kay Jollibee, bumili ng pagkain, etc. So, but savings is not enough. You need to grow your money. And there are some ways on how you can grow your money. You can actually be into business, no? Mag-franchise ka, magtayo ka ng negosyo. But make sure you have the capital management expertise in the market. Because most businesses close shop, okay, after two years. Second is you can invest in properties, but then again, you need capital, you need a good location, okay, and then you have to consider the taxation brought about it. The most simple type of investment is to invest in financial or paper assets, okay? So I'm not going to the details, but there are pooled funds, no? Banks offers you ITF, in insurance offers uh, variable life. Investment companies offer mutual funds. No? So there are a lot of shops that you can actually look into because when you, you invest in paper assets, you actually become co-owners of these properties. Okay. So in closing, if you don't design your own life, chances are you'll fall into someone else's plan. And guess what? They have not planned much for you. Not much. That's why, sabi nga ni uh, Bill Gates, if you're born poor, it's not your mistake. But if you die poor, it's your mistake. For those who are employed, it's not the obligation of your employer to make you wealthy. And your ability to accumulate wealth has nothing to do with the size of your income. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm sorry to exceed a little bit from the presentation. But if you need to get in touch with me, this is my contact detail. Or you can actually course it through Jeff. So, a good afternoon, gentlemen. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Miguel, for that comprehensive presentation on uh, the benefits of life and non-life insurance. Ayan. Um, we have just one question, I think. I think we just have room for one question, and this is from Jeff himself. Um, very quickly lang, so what's the impact of COVID on HMO coverage and life insurance? Did it change the coverage and amount and limit the life insurance co coverage if with co comorbidity. What's the effect on the coverage for employees? Will COVID death due to work conditions be covered by employment insurance or company insurance? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff, for your question. Okay. So what's the impact of COVID on HMO coverage? The good thing about it is premiums have not really increased. Um, one thing that you have to understand when you talk about insurance is if a condition like uh, COVID-19 is declared as a pandemic, insurers are not obligated to cover the risk. It is a general exclusion in any insurance policy. Standard po yan. Pag naging pandemic siya globally, ibig sabihin yan, hindi po dapat yan kinocover ng kahit anong insurance policy. But the good thing about our government and our insurers is they opted to cover the impact of COVID-19 to their clients, not to their policyholders. So rates have not increased, premium rates have not increased. And the good thing is they have actually covered uh, COVID conditions. Now, coverage has not also changed. As I mentioned, HMO can cover you about 70 to 150. For certain executives, they can cover you up to about half a million pesos. From my experience alone, we have cases where the hospitalization cost for COVID amounted to about 2 million, 3 million pesos. In extreme cases, depending on comorbidity, kung hypertensive siya, meron pa siyang diabetes, the bill can actually run up in 5 millions. No, so if you have an HMO covering you for 150,000, definitely the balance of hospital costs will be drawn from out-of-the-pocket expenses. 
So it's important that you position, especially if you're conscious, no? We don't know yet as to when the situation would normalize. I would I would really strongly suggest instead of getting an HMO plan, get a medical insurance coverage. There are a couple of uh, non-life and life insurance companies that offer medical insurance at the moment. For employees, it really depends on the company because there are companies, uh, depending on their budget, that continue to provide life coverage. And this would definitely address the debt component brought about by COVID-19. Now, will COVID debt due to work condition be covered by employment? Yes, because uh, what we actually cover is the risk of death or illness brought about by this viral condition. I am a dialysis patient. Can I get a health insurance? For an HMO plan, most likely you will, you know, you will be denied coverage. For but for a medical insurance plan, the risk may be covered, subject to additional loading or additional premium because of the risk. And most likely, depending on the severity of the condition, coverage may be given partial or limited. So, but the best thing is to apply and have the company assess the medical condition. So again, I hope you learned something in this discussion. Medyo mahaba lang po talaga. Tsaka, it's really, you know, there are a lot of topics you know, that uh, is under life and non-life. So I tried really just to condense it for the discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Thank, Thank you very you much know. for that. Um, in case you do